All right, in this lesson, let's talk about the different kinds or types of energy. Remember that energy equals work, okay? I don't know how many times I've said it, but if you're watching these, you're probably getting sick of me doing it. Energy equals work. And the unit for both, joules. All right, let's go in. So work and energy. Work and energy are both measured in joules. Hey, look at that. Work done equals energy spent. Wow, I just said that right here. There are two types of energy. You have potential energy and kinetic energy. So since this lesson is called types of energy, and I just said there are two types, guess what we're going to talk about the rest of this video? That's right, potential and kinetic energy. Let's dive in. Potential energy, that's the stuff that's stored. That means I have the potential to do things, just like all of you. All of you teenagers have so much potential energy, yet some of you decide to be worthless, lazy, little children most of the time, and then eventually you become kinetic. Wait, there, wait, no, there it is, kinetic energy. That's where you're moving and not just sitting there. Okay, back to potential energy. That is stored energy. What that means is you would be the coyote chilling on this spring, ready to eat some Roadrunner until you go splat because that's the way that the cartoonist decided to write it. Or another way, you have stored energy in this bow and you're ready to release it, but that's not going to work out for you either because for some reason you decided to stick your head right in the path of the bow itself. Now, all this doesn't matter as far as cartoons and stuff like that. All it is to show or meant to do is to illustrate what stored energy looks like. Okay, uh, It's the preparation of energy. It usually happens right before movement occurs, but this is stored energy. It's potential. So I have the potential to do X amount of energy, it's stored. And it comes in two varieties, elastic, which is an example of this, and an example of this. And then of course we have gravitational. So gravitational potential energy is like this guy. Here he is, same dude, that's him, okay? Same guy, he is just about to fall to his doom and go that way. And he's gonna be drawn that way to the ground by what force? That's right, your good old friend, gravity. Gravity at maximum height, so the toss this guy's going to get is considered to be, uh, where is it, the biggest GPE. And that kind of makes sense if you look at this fun formula. Gravitational potential energy. Gravitational potential energy. Man, scientists are clever with their acronyms. Equals mass times acceleration due to gravity times height. So does it make sense that if height is 1,000 meters it will have higher gravitational potential energy than say if height was, I don't know, zero, okay? So the highest the object can get, the maximum height, on a velocity would be zero in that case, all right? At maximum height, you have the highest gravitational potential energy. When you hit the ground, your potential energy is zero and you've transferred all of that to kinetic energy, okay? So that's a big concept, learn that one. Let's look at a practice problem. A poor hungry 10 kilogram coyote is merciless. There's a lot of adjectives here. So I need a mass. I have 10 kilograms. I see a height that's 360 meters. And blah, 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 blah. I want to know GPE. What else do I know? Well, I know acceleration due to gravity is always 9.8 meters per second squared. That's really helpful. And if we go back to our formula that we have, boom, gravitational potential energy equals mass times acceleration due to gravity times height. Well, we have mass, we have height, and we have acceleration due to gravity. Do we always have acceleration due to gravity? Yup. Okay, so we always have this. So GPE, which is what we're looking for, equals 10 times 360 times 9.8. And without taking out a calculator, I know that that's 3,600 times 9.8, which would probably put you around the 35,000-ish mark joules because gravitational potential energy, energy, remember energy equals work, and work is done in joules, so therefore energy is also has a unit of joules, which is why that little guy right there is joules. And for those of you sticklers of math and you really want to know specific numbers to see if I'm correct in my mental jogging, 3600 times 9.8 is 35,280 joules. 
So not bad for doing it in my head. That would be 35,280 joules for those of you who like to be very specific. Okay, moving on. Kinetic energy. Just so you know, that stuff is what you need to know for potential energy. That's one type. Second type, kinetic. So if it's not potential energy, meaning it's not stored, what do you think kinetic energy means? It must be moving. It's used energy. It's how much energy we actually use. So if you go for a jog, it'll tell you how much energy is used. If you eat a Snickers bar, okay, the Snickers bar itself is full of energy. It's, 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 it's not kinetic because it's not moving, right? It's stored energy, otherwise known as potential energy. When your digestive system digests that Snickers bar, it is broken up into its little tiny components where it moves and allows you to move, therefore transferring to kinetic energy. Now, kinetic energy is inversely related to potential energy. Hopefully you remember the whole direct and inverse. That means if one goes up, the other must go down. So therefore, at maximum height, where potential energy is the absolute highest, kinetic energy is the lowest. And it is kinetic energy is highest just before impact. Okay? Where potential energy is lowest. Inverse relationship. So let's look at a practice problem. Uh, gibberish, gibberish, gibberish. Gibberish, gibberish, gibberish. Oh, here we go. Mass. Height. Well, otherwise known as distance. You could also call that height, I guess. What was the hapless victim's kinetic energy? So we want kinetic energy. What we need to find kinetic energy is a formula. And we didn't get one here yet. Well, son of a gun. Let's give you it. Kinetic energy is equal to one half times mass times, oh, there we go, there we go, final velocity squared. All right, so that is the formula for kinetic energy. Well, let's see, what do we have? I have mass, that's good. I have height or distance, that's not good. I have nothing else. Well, I kind of have something else, right? Because let's go back into some of this gibberish. Finally gives it and he pushed off a ledge. So here's my guy. Here's, I'm going to get pushed off this ledge and go down. So I know what? It's a dropped problem. So what do I know about dropped problems? I know a couple of things. I know that initial velocity must be 0 meters per second. I also know that acceleration must be 9.8 meters per second squared. I also have a distance of 58 meters. So that means I could find time, which will lead me to final velocity, because I want this guy. And then I could plug mass, which I was given, and the final velocity, which I calculate, into this problem, or this formula, and I get kinetic energy. So let's do all this crazy math that we get to do now. You're excited, I know. So distance equals this doodad, and then half of that, and then at squared. So distance is 58. Uh, that's 0 plus 1 half 9.8 t squared. 58 equals 4.9 t squared. Divide both sides by 4.9. Okay, please don't subtract. I know, I know you guys get confused. Okay, so like 0 plus that when you when this is zero that goes away the plus sign goes away it gets obliterated it gets it's not even here it was never here stop subtracting it to the other side because it's not going to work and you're going to get the wrong answer and you're going to make mr Cromel angry when he has to grade your stuff okay thanks okay so you divide both sides by 4.9 58 divided by 4.9 equals 11.84 equals t squared. Then we must square root that do that and we get 3.4 seconds as our time. Now we can plug in acceleration equals VF minus VI divided by T 9.8. VF is what we want minus 0 divided by 3.4. VF 
equals, wow, that's terrible, 9.8 times 3.4. Oh, what happened? Oh, that's not good. There we go. VF equals 33.72 meters per second. Finally, we can take this and plug it in up here. So kinetic energy equals one half the mass, which is seven times 33.72 equals a number times seven times 0.5 equals uh, 118. And it's in kinetic energy, so that must be joules. Bam, got it, okay? That was fun, wasn't it? Yeah, that was awesome. All right, moving on. Uh, so this is just showing the inverse relationship. So at the top of this guy, we have gravitational potential energy. Let's say that's 1,000 joules. And down here, gravitational potential energy equals zero joules, okay? So up here, kinetic energy would be zero joules. And down here, kinetic energy is a thousand joules. And let's say this halfway point, GPE would be 500 joules, and kinetic energy would, oh, that's K, okay, would also be 500 joules, okay? So as GPE goes down, kinetic energy goes up. Inverse relationship. Yeah, yeah. All right, so let's look at law of conservation energy. That's this guy. Energy cannot be created or destroyed. It can only be transferred. And in this case, it gets transferred from potential energy to kinetic energy. And the, everything is right with the world because that's the way friction decides to explain it. Ooh, um, spoiler. Learn those, that these are all types of energy. I don't know why, but like my psychic thinking my brain is like saying it's like make sure they know those make sure they know those are types of energy and yeah i'm not going to say any more than that all right so let's look back at this guy this guy that's that same problem that i made you do here with all that rigmarole that we all hate it so so much and we know that if we have what was the hapless victim's kinetic energy right before he hit the ground so we have a ledge we have a, a something a guy that's going to die He's going to go down here, okay? And we want to know this part, KE. And we know that GPE is the biggest at max height, which would make sense that max height would be the top of the mountain, right? And therefore, that this number here would be the same as kinetic energy here because as this guy falls, he loses uh, potential energy and gains kinetic energy to be equivalent because whatever energy we have here just gets transferred to the energy here. So it doesn't matter what we call it, just as long as if it's max height and it's a thousand joules, it's going to be the same as a thousand joules of kinetic energy at the bottom. So really, what we could use instead, if you wanted to, GPE at max height is, again, mass times acceleration due to gravity times height. And it just so happens we have mass, we have height, and we always, always, always know acceleration due to gravity. So GPE equals 7 kilograms times 58 meters times 9.8. That's out of order, but see, that guy goes there, and that guy goes there, and this guy goes there, and we're happy. And then we just have to do some calculations in our things that do that called calculators. Yes, I'm biding time while I get mine up. Okay, 7 times 58 times 9.8 equals, who that's a big number, uh, 3978.8 joules. Wow. Okay, so that's really all we have to do. We have acceleration due to gravity, we have mass, and we have 9.8 kilograms, or 9.8 meters per second squared, all right? So that could be the same thing as the other one. So yeah, happy days. And that's the end of it. So I am going to let you go for now. And I'll pause for a second. Hold the phone. Okay. I was like, man, I got the wrong answer on the other one. What did I do wrong? And that's because, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, and Miles James, and I'm going to call you out because I know 100% that you are never going to watch this video. So, yeah, you probably don't even know. I forgot one very important point here. I forgot to square the final velocity. 
which is why I only got this number. So let's start this part over, okay? Now, in this giant rigmarole, I told you that we did all this math, and the other math is fine. All this math here, yeah, that's good stuff. All right, so kinetic energy equals, again, one half of the mass times final velocity squared. Don't forget to square like I did, otherwise you'll look foolish on YouTube. So one half of seven times 33.72 squared, and let's see what that comes out to be. So 33.72 squared, that equals 1137, uh, and that's times seven, and then that's gonna be divided by two, and hey, that looks much better. 3979.63. Okay, and then if we compare, we got 3978.8. So we were off by, wait, hold on, 3978.8. We were off by 0.83 joules between the two formulas, between you doing all that math and then this math. And the reason, rounding. Remember how I said don't ever round until the very, very end, otherwise your, your, your numbers get wrong? That's why. So rounding caused a 0.83 joules difference. But it's okay because, you know, we deal and I don't know why anyone would want to go through all of that craziness when you could just learn that gravitational potential energy equals kinetic energy. It just depends on where it is in the problem, meaning if it's at maximum height, GPE um, is the exact same as kinetic energy at its lowest point right before impact. So if the question asks you right before it hits the ground, that means kinetic energy is equal to the gravitational potential energy at max height. See, maximum height, it's 1,000 joules, and kinetic energy, it's 1,000 joules. Just like I said, we have 3978.8 of uh, potential energy at maximum height at 58 meters tall, and we have a kinetic energy of 3979, well, let's just 3978.8 because, you know, not rounding. 3978.8, there we go, um, at kinetic energy right before it hits. Mind blown, I hope. Anyway, sorry for a little confusion there, and hopefully that fixed it, and y'all have a nice day.